Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is out. It's 1.38 in the morning and I've just come back from seeing it. And I didn't want to wait until later on to review it since my thoughts are so fresh about it right now. And I really want to get my thoughts out about this film. So the original 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy was a massive success. It was a massive gamble by Marvel since it was a whole new set of characters that people didn't really know about. But everyone loved it. It was funny. It had really interesting characters. It was quirky. It had offbeat humour. And it wasn't afraid to go to places where Marvel films hadn't gone before. So now three years later we've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And it is a sequel, and the main problem with sequels to big films is that they're not as good as the first one. But I am happy to say that this film is absolutely incredible. It is hilarious, it has character moments, it is all round a really, really great film. It's essentially the Empire Strikes Back of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. As in, it has improvements in the special effects, the characters go to much deeper emotional places and it essentially improves the entire themes of the first film and it builds upon them and as every good sequel should do it uh, it builds upon what the first film did so well and it delivers a thoroughly thoroughly entertaining film that I really loved. For now I'm not going to do a spoiler filled review, I'll do that maybe a bit later on, I'm going to keep it spoiler free. Uh, I just want to talk about the things that I really, really liked. Chris Pratt is great as Star-Lord. This is his role, and he does it so well, and he fills the character with so much depth, and his facial expressions are great, and he can be charming and funny when he needs to be, and he is so good as this character, and the characters in this film are so well fleshed out by this point, and the film does a great job of fleshing them out even more by giving them by giving us more things to care about them. So Star-Lord's relationship with Gamora is still there. They have that kind of chemistry where they don't really want to admit that they like each other. They, they, they say it's this unspoken thing between the two of them, but they can't actually admit that they really like each other. And uh, Star-Lord also has, he meets his father in the film. That's not a spoiler, you, you know that from the general plot synopsis from, from the trailers. And his father is called Ego, played by Kurt Russell. And Kurt Russell, his character isn't that well fleshed out, but um, he's really good in the role. At one time, he can be really nice to Peter Quill, and then he can turn it on his head and can be slightly menacing sometimes. And his character goes to a place where I actually wasn't expecting him to be in the beginning of the film. But I won't go into it too much, because that's a major event spoiler in the film. So anyway, Dave Bautista is great as Drax, he is so funny and it's incredible how he's a wrestler and he just, he's so good at acting. Well not so good at acting but this role is like it was made for him. His character isn't the most developed out of the group but they leave some of the best and funniest lines for Drax since his thing is that he always seems to tell the truth and when you tell the truth constantly it leads to very funny situations. You've got Rocket Raccoon voiced by Bradley Cooper and his character was one of the best parts of the first film but what they did in this film they kept that and you know how his friendship with Groot was one of the funniest parts of the first film his best friend was was Big Groot and now you've got, you got Baby Groot and he is adorable. The audience loved Baby Groot and he has some incredible scenes. So hilarious. Uh, so Rocket Raccoon, now he has to, he's like a father figure to this, this tiny tree because he doesn't have his Big Groot friend anymore. He has this small Groot as his friend and their relationship was funny as well. And Rocket Raccoon also, his character is fleshed out and he learns more things about himself and when he was such a dick in the first film and when he actually starts feeling proper emotion that's one of the things that really hits you in the feels and this movie does hit you in the feels a lot and like I said it is like the Empire Strikes Back of the Guardians of the Galaxy the series in that it takes everything darker it is much darker than the first film it doesn't have what well, it still keeps that same space opera happiness but it does take the characters to darker levels and it's all the better for it the special effects are top notch there are only a few scenes where it, it seemed the characters were surrounded by green screens and they were sort of looking around and you sort of knew that their backgrounds were green screen or blue screen and that it was entirely computer generated but always weighting them down, always 
keeping things at a human level were the characters. So as as great and as expansive as the special effects were, you always had those central characters that you love so much that really brings the action to a human level and not just a massive special effects extravaganza. You have those characters and that's what makes the film and action so good. That's why you care about what's happening. It's the characters. Another thing that the film does really well is that uh, it has all these m huge numbers of characters. You've got Yandu played by uh, Michael Rooker and Nebula played by Karen Gillan. They're two more characters that have to come in and their characters are also taken to greater levels. Nebula, as you know, is Gamora's sister. They are the daughters of Thanos. Thanos is the, the big villain. Not just one of the main antagonists of the film, but the huge MCU villain. Like, he is the bad guy that they're going to fight in uh, Infinity War. So Gamora and Nebula are his daughters. And you learn about how he was a huge dick to them when they were being brought up. And you learn about their relationship when they were children. Fleshes out those characters even more. Yandu is really good in this film. Michael Rooker is great as Yandu. And his character, I'm, I'm going to keep saying this, the characters are taken to much greater levels than in the first film. And you learn more about them. You care more about them. The characters are fleshed out. Really good character development here. And Yandu is really good as well. You learn about more about his relationship with young Peter Quill and it's really interesting because the script does it so well it's so hard to balance this huge ensemble of characters but it pulls it off magnificently. The only gripe I really have with the film and it's not a major one but there are a group of villains and they're not the main villain of the film which I won't give away but uh, they're these these yellow gold people called the Sovereign and Basically, something's taken from them, so they have to chase after the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they they have some funny scenes, but they're slightly over the top, and you don't really care too much about them. So, that it, it's it's a small gripe. And the only other problem that I have with the film, it's not really much of a problem, but it, it doesn't feel as fresh as the original. The original was so different, and that's why everyone loved it. But by this point, people know what they want to get out of the Guardians of the Galaxy, movie but that's not really a problem since it does it so well and the film is so good so it's it's not as original as the original but <laughs> but it, it's still a great movie on its own terms i'm going to give guardians of the galaxy volume 2 an a it's one of my favorite films of the year so far definitely the action scenes are great the special effects are top notch the performances are so good. Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana as Gamora, uh, Dave Bautista, Vin Diesel. <laughs> it's so incredible thinking that Vin Diesel is Baby Groot. I mean, he's the motion capture, he's the voice, and he's, he's so cute. He's like Baby Groot. And he has the opening scene is set to Mr. Blue Sky by ELO, which is one of my favourite songs already. But it's Baby Groot dancing to Mr. Blue Sky, and it is. It's such a genius way to start your film, having the funniest character, the most adorable character, literally like dancing to Mr. Blue Sky, while everything else, there's this, this huge battle going on behind them, and you've got Baby Groot just sort of dancing like this to the music. It's, it was the funniest thing, one of the funniest things in the film, but Baby Groot is great. The action scenes are amazing. The characters are so good. Performances, special effects, it all adds up to a really, really good film, and I can't wait for Guardians 3, Infinity War. And Marvel are so good at setting up these films, these characters, these themes that cross over the universes and all of their films. And they've got Spider-Man Homecoming and Thor Ragnarok both coming out this year. Combined with the success of this film already, it's making so much money, this year is going to be huge for Marvel. And it's just another step in their journey to movie domination and I can't wait for the future films. This film is so good, I loved it so much. Go out and see it. Even if you haven't seen the original, you can go into this film and enjoy it uh, without really knowing what's going on. It holds up on its own terms and yeah, just watch it. So those are my thoughts, lots of thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I had to get them out right now as soon as I've seen it because I don't want to lose these thoughts when I go to sleep and wake up in the morning if I'd filmed a review then. So, there you go, and uh, that's that's it. Yeah, 
it's a big movie month. May we've got Alien Covenant, uh, Baywatch, uh, King Arthur, and then uh, next month we've got Pirates of the Caribbean and various other films. It's it's a massive year for films, and I'm so excited. It's been a great start, and here's to hoping that the rest of the year finishes out as good as it started. So, those are my thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and some other thoughts as well. Until the next time, goodbye.